Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the MiG-21 BIS, which has been recently released. In this video I want to show you how to operate the air-to-air -air radar and infrared guided missiles against airborne targets. Let's first switch on the necessary systems. Here on our circuit breaker panel, on the right hand side, we have most of the switches necessary to power the system. Uh, all the weapon related switches or weapon system related switches are marked in black or have a black shaft. I'll start with this switch, which is for the ASO site. Switch this one here on. We want to switch those two switches on, which will give power to the pilots. We'll switch this switch on, and we will switch this switch on. And um, as you can see, I have left this switch out. And the reason for this is, uh, this is the master arm switch in uh, American aircraft, as it would be called. And the master arm switch, obviously, um, disables all the weapon systems. So, until you switch this switch on, you cannot fire or accidentally release a weapon. And in reality, you would switch this switch on just before you enter the combat zone or just shortly before you expect to engage an enemy or even encounter an enemy. Uh, however, we are engaging um, a couple of bombers or transport aircraft in a few seconds, so we'll switch this on right now anyway. Next switch here is the radar switch, and it's currently in the middle position, which is the standby slash warm up position. And we want to switch it up to the radar on position. And you can see the radar switched on in the left hand side. Oh, sorry for that. Switched on here, and the screen is already indicated. Next switches we need to worry about are up here. Um, this leftmost switch is the ground or air mode switch. In the downward position, it's uh, the ground mode and in the upwards position it's the air to air mode so you want to have the switch in the up position and um, this switch here decides whether we use IR or radar guided missiles uh, the upward, upwards position is for IR guided missiles and the lower position is for radar guided missiles and we will start off with the radar guided missiles first which I have loaded on two pylons 1 and 2 which are the inner pylons so what we want to do, uh, we want to switch the weapon station selector switch, uh, which is also a weapon uh, type selector switch. We want to switch it either to the 1 or 2 position, which will either launch a missile from the 1 or 2 rack. However, we can also set it to the 1, 2 position, which will allow us to fire both of our missiles with about a half a second to a second delay uh, with one press of the trigger, which we will use against the big target we are engaging today. And um, this is all we need to do around here. The final thing is the gun sight we have here. Uh, as you can currently see it's not displaying anything so you want to switch on um, the lights first and we can switch on the pipper by moving this switch here which you can see the pipper started to eliminate and the fixed net grid with this switch here. And if you so wish we could adjust the intensity or brightness with this knob here or the brightness of the fixed net with this knob down here. And then we have a couple more switches. Again, um, this switch here has to be in the lower position which is the PC position for missiles. We want to have this missile, um, this switch in the upwards position which stands for um, gunning and uh, the lower position will be bombing and we want to be in the automatic position on this switch which is the upward position. And finally, the very last switch we have to flick before we actually can start to engage someone is this switch here. And um, this is how the pipper moves and the upward position, as you might uh, see, this is this was IR guided missiles and this is IR guided missiles or missiles at all. And the lower position would be for gunning. So we will leave the switch in the upwards position. And um, this is all we need to do. Uh, I mean, it's all, it's quite a lot still, but um, it's basically the complete setup and I will spawn in a enemy bomber in a second and unpause the simulation and we will start to engage. Okay, now we are inbound to the first target. So uh, let's have a look at the radar screen. And the uh, radar screen down here, it basically shows a top-down view um, of that what the radar sees. And um, the furthest point, or the furthest up point on the display indicates uh, a target at 30 kilometers away, while the middle is about 15 kilometers away, and down here that's our aircraft. And it can see 30 degrees to the right and 30 degrees to the left, as well as 1.5 degrees 
below the horizontal axis and about 20 degrees above the horizontal axis meaning that you want to have the target above you or that you want to be below the target when trying to search for it which will make it much easier to find it but more on that on a separate video explaining the radar a bit more anyway uh, to lock the target we have to have it within those two vertical bars and we can then move the horizontal bars above it so that uh, basically the target is boxed in um, we cannot move the we cannot move left and right here as you would do with a norm uh, uh, with a new aircraft you just have to maneuver your aircraft so that the target is within those two uh, horizontal and vertical bars uh, the horizontal bars can be moved but uh, in the vertical bars. Okay, and now the target is about to fly out to the left, so let me just correct for that a bit and then uh, try to lock up by holding down the lock key for a second. And there you have a lock, and now the view changed into more or less a tail chasing view. And basically, this means if the target is in the middle of the screen, we are just following the target in the middle, just flying right towards the target. If the target however would be to the top left of the screen would mean that the target would be up there and uh, if it would be to the bottom right of the screen the target would be down there although, although uh, the radar cannot see that far downward so it would basically lose the lock. Anyway, we now have um, the horizontal bar is getting wider and wider and um, uh, the vertical lines are coming in and once they're within the gap of the horizontal bar this means that we would be within range for our missile however um, missiles being quite old and um, firing them at max range is not a good idea so we'll just wait a few seconds until we're about at half about our missiles are about half a bit way between the gap and the target and uh, which is about to happen right now so just let me correct a bit to the left and we can see the target in the hut coming up or in the gun sight and let's just let's hold down the weapon release button and there goes the first missile and there goes the second missile and uh, we just have to now keep the lock onto the target until the missiles hit and um, as you could see there was one hit the other missile missed unfortunately but uh, I guess we did some damage although the aircraft uh, appears to be flying and uh, we either would go ahead and try another run in with the air to air infrared guided missiles, or we would go ahead and um, kill the aircraft with the gun. But to keep the tutorial somewhat short, I will just continue towards the next target, and um, which you can see coming in on the radar screen as well. Uh, but let's first um, switch over this switch here to the IR guided missile position and switch to station 3 and 4 which on this flight have loaded the IR guided missiles and now the radar symbology being locked up is the same however this doesn't really matter anymore uh, for the IR guided missiles obviously you don't need the radar lock anymore even and um, we now need to wait for the pipper on the gun side to be over the target which then indicates that the missile has found and identify the target or not identified but has locked onto the target and um, to actually do that uh, we more or less need to see the target and we need to be much closer so um, don't expect very high, uh, high ranges with the IR guided missiles from that time and you cannot actually slew them to the radar direction you actually have to fly the pipper onto the target and uh, the radar as said is not necessary but useful and you can see the target is up there and um, once we get the paper close yeah you could see it jumped up to the target meaning it has identified the target or at least found it and um, locked into it and uh, we now would be at about the point to hold down the weapon release button once twice both missiles go you see the target starts to flare but that didn't help him and he is definitely dead and um, this more or less concludes the air-to-air -air infrared and radar guided missile tutorial and um, as said I will do a video on how to use, uh, use the radar more efficiently and how to use the different filters and um, I suggest that you just keep training um, engaging with air-to-air -air guided missiles and the MiG-21 and um, then also fighting against more maneuverable targets will get quite easy at one point however don't expect too good performance, it's an old aircraft, those are old missiles, you're quite limited. And um, 
it's definitely a challenge, but a very fun challenge. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video and thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.